The PlayStation 1, released in 1994 in Japan and one year later in the US, this system was a failed collaboration between Sony and Nintendo to create a CD-ROM based add-on for the Super Nintendo. And I'm glad it did fail, otherwise there would have never been a PlayStation, therefore we would have never gotten a PS2 which is my favorite console of all time by the way. But back to the original OG PS1, which was also a good system. So I'm going to give you a quick history lesson. As I said, PS1 was released in 1994 in Japan and 1995 in the US. Well, in 1999, we got the first ever PS1 emulator called the Virtual Game Station. It was an emulator by Connectix that allowed Sony PlayStation games to be played on a desktop computer. It was first released for the Macintosh and was showed off at Macworld in 1999 by Steve Jobs. This emulator was released at a time when the Sony PlayStation was at its peak of popularity. Even back then, this emulator enabled games to run at full speed on powerful computer hardware in its time. It also supported a lot of PlayStation games. Really, the only lacking features were the ability to receive DualShock vibration or to be able to use light guns. Also in 1999, we got an emulator called Bleem that would come on a disc that ran on Windows 95 and 98. Or get this, you could get the Dreamcast disc that was renamed to Bleemcast and run the emulator on your Sega Dreamcast. This was cool at the time, but it did come with issues with compatibility and performance on Dreamcast, but ran a lot smoother on Windows. Now the life of the Bleem emulator was short lived due to a legal battle with Sony. One year later, in 2000, we got another emulator called EPSXE that is available for Windows, Linux, Mac, and Android. This was a big step up from what we had seen before. This emulator does require a BIOS for full game compatibility and full memory card support. Now let me be straight up with you. This is a good emulator if you plan on running it on less powerful systems or older hardware. But if your computer or Android are running specs from the past four to five years, then, well, you want to go with the options I offer later in this video. Another notable emulator is PCSX Reloaded, available on Windows, Linux, and Mac. This is the easiest emulator out of these to set up, plus its compatibility is high, and even better, it doesn't require a BIOS to run your games. However, using this as a standalone emulator is fine, you will have a good experience. But if you use PCSX Reloaded through certain front ends like Emulation Station or LaunchBox, you will have some issues. Okay, so today, the best standalone PS1 emulator in 2025 is Duck Station. That's available on Windows, Linux, Mac, and Android. Once again, we have great compatibility with nearly all games fully playable. It has the highest speed and accuracy, but it isn't the easiest emulator to set up. Well, not as easy as PCSX Reloaded, but it's still pretty easy to get set up with a lot more features available. It also has smooth online multiplayer using DuckStation Netplay, and it has the best looking interface that allows you to add box art to all of your games. Honestly, it doesn't get better than this for a PS1 emulation. Now in most cases, standalone emulators are the best, but most of your multi-system emulators have PS1 options as well. The big one being RetroArch. There are cores on there for PS1 emulation, and really they all do a decent job. I personally use the PCSX Rearmed core. Also you can use Manafin or BizHawk on Windows. If you're on Mac, then you can use OpenMU, and if you're on Android, there is Lemuroid. All of these are great choices for PS1 emulation because PS1 emulation has been in development for so long that at this point, it really isn't bad no matter what you use. But there is one emulator that still needs a lot of work and that is the PS1 emulator for iOS called Gamma that as of right now lacks a lot of features and has a lot of compatibility issues. But then again, I don't wanna talk too bad about this emulator because it was just released last year on May 11th, 2024. So I am pretty sure it will get much better over time. 
At the end of the day, my number one pick for Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android is DuckStation. Hands down, no questions asked. If you're on iOS, I recommend RetroArch using the Beetle Core. So in 2025, PS1 emulation is in a great spot with every emulator that's available besides Gamma being a good emulator with near perfect compatibility. You really can't go wrong no matter what you decide to use. Speaking of use, if you need help setting up any of these emulators, you can check out my setup guides in the description below. We're really, really excited about games and again, our goal is to have the best game machine in the world. Now, this is another game machine. It's the most popular game machine in the world. Wouldn't it be great if, if we could play some of those titles too? Hmm. <clears throat> well, at Macworld today, Connectix is introducing the virtual game station. It is software. <clears throat> It is software that they're going to sell for $49 that turns your Mac into a Sony PlayStation. It plays a few hundred, it, it plays a few hundred of the Sony PlayStation games today. And I'd like to ask Phil.